Hi there, and welcome to Little Garden on the Prairies. So it is mid-November here in Saskatchewan, Canada, and as you can see, we've got a nice layer of snow. The weather is turning cold, the days are getting shorter, and because of that, if you're like me, you have to spend a lot of time indoors all winter long. And things can get kind of uh, blue when you have are stuck indoors and can't get out in your yard to do the things that you normally like to do in the long summer days. So today we're just going to talk about house plants and how I find that having these growing in my house is a great way to beat the winter blues, looking after them, trying different uh, varieties, finding ways to propagate them and multiply them, decorating with plants. All are just kind of a fun thing to keep going throughout the winter and keep your thumb green and something to kind of beat away those winter blues. So let's get into it. So I just want to give you a quick view of what I see from my work at home desk here that I have set up and been working at since uh, the starting of COVID. I still work at home part time now and I really like this space that I've created with house plants and it just gives me something to look at and enjoy while I'm working. But I didn't stop there and of course the love of plants and it's kind of an addiction that you really can't stop. But I've expanded into my dining room and kitchen and most of my plants have come from cuttings that I have uh, taken from friends plants. I have to say that I have not spent a whole lot of money on plants and if you're willing to start things small and watch them grow big then you can really uh, get into house plants without spending a lot of money. I like sourcing out different types of containers from the dollar store or thrift stores. And here is one of the plants that I've been propagating that I'm hoping I can uh, share with my daughter. And one thing about living on the dry Saskatchewan prairies in the winter time with a furnace running all the time, it gets super dry in our home. So having a humidifier running is something that um, we always use in the winter time. It's good for us and it's good for the plants. And so when the company from Yokicon contacted me to see if I would like to test out their uh, cool warm mist humidifier. I was very excited to give it a try and in today's video I'm just going to give you a quick review of how I use this humidifier in my bedroom in the evenings for us to use and also how I use it around my house plants. So this is very easy to get set up. There's basically three parts to it and there's a small hose that uh, you need to just unpackage and connect to the pump. And then from there you're pretty much ready to fill it up with water. So it is recommended that you use distilled water or reverse osmosis water. We have a filtering system running through our fridge of our tap water. So that's what I'm going to be using to fill it up here today. So I'm just going to run you through some of the uh, controls here on the touch screen, which is really easy to use. So basically the power button is your first button. And one of the features that I really like here is it has a timer. So you can have it running up from anywhere from one hour to 12. It has three levels of mist here. So it's on the high mist right now. So you can see there's quite a good spray coming out of there, but you can decrease it down to one two or three. So that's kind of a nice feature. You can also set the level of humidity that you want the area to reach. So if you set it, say it's 60% or 65, it will keep running and when the area reaches that level of humidity, it will automatically shut off. So you can really control, you know, how humid you want your space to get. And if you're running it in your bedroom at night, you can turn it to warm mist and also dim the lights on this because this is a little bit bright in the darkness so you can actually dim the lights on here at night so that's a nice feature and as you can see here there's also just a water level uh, meter here so you can tell when you're um, full to the max and when it's getting low so they do recommend when not in use for a long time like more than a day or two that you should remove all the water in there so that you know it doesn't uh, prevents mold or impurities. They give you this nice little scrubby sponge that you can uh, clean your container out with some soap and water. 
So I just wanted to show you my old humidifier that I've been using just to show you um, the difference here. You can see this container that the water goes into is really crusty and kind of gross and it's pretty much impossible to clean once it gets that way. And also with this, you have to replace the filter um, either yearly or once or twice during the winter season, which um, can get pretty costly. So this is another feature with the Yukikon humidifier that I'm really happy with that it is going to be very easy to keep clean and keep sanitized. And another great feature in comparison to my old humidifier is that this is very quiet, which is a really nice feature when you're running it in your bedroom at night. My old humidifier kind of roared and chugged and glub glubbed away all night. So I really like running this at night. So I've been using this cool, warm mist humidifier from YokiCon for about a week now. And so far I'm really happy with it. It is a nice looking uh, model. It has a lot of great features that I know I will use around my plants and in my bedroom. And I will leave the link to the Amazon products in the description box below so you can check out and get more information on this product. So downstairs here in my basement, most of my stuff is growing hydroponically, so I don't really need it to run a humidifier. But as I mentioned earlier, I like to propagate and multiply my house plants. I got some Diefenbachias here, some coleuses, some pothos. So I like to take cuttings and root them in water and then share them with my friends. Here I have a whole bunch of coleus and uh, potato ivy that I took from my outdoor containers in the fall. I rooted them, I got them planted up in about four different containers. And all winter I will be taking cuttings and multiplying them into little potted plants so that in the spring I have a whole bunch of free uh, plants to go out in my outdoor containers. I've also been really getting into succulents. They are something that I was always finding really challenging to grow in the past, but I've been doing a lot of research on YouTube and they are really fun to try and propagate and get growing indoors as well. So highly recommend uh, trying out some succulents as well. So what kind of hobbies do you do to help you get through the long cold winters? I would love to hear about it in the comments below. Let you, me know what you think of my house plant collection and don't forget to hit that like button and hit subscribe so that you don't miss out on future videos coming to the channel. Thank you for watching and happy gardening.